Well, hi there. Welcome to today's edition of Controversial Coronavirus Thoughts with Carnivore MD. I'm repping my man, Mark Bell, Song, Super Training Gym. Got my mask on, but it's inside, so I just wear it for effect. And it fogs up my glasses, fogs up my blue blockers when I do that. As you guys can see, I got a new thing on my nose here. <laughs> Ripped a breatherite strip off and it tore my nose skin. But this is not about my nose skin. This is about my thoughts on coronavirus for today. So I want to share with you guys some exciting, well, maybe not exciting, but some interesting thoughts that were primarily uh, spurred from my buddy Anthony Gustin's newsletter, who pointed out a couple of these things to me, stuff that I've been mentioning for the last few days. I think at this point, it's clear that um, comorbidities are a huge factor in the progression of coronavirus. If you listen to the podcast that I released today with Stephen Hussey, we talked all about insulin resistance and obesity and the conditions which are connected with those as major risk factors for both hospitalization and progression to ICU admission. I've been posting about that on Twitter. And I wanna share with you guys a few things and a really, really cool article um, that Anthony turned me on to. So I'm gonna do a screen share here and share some of this stuff. So the first thing I wanna share with you, we're gonna come back to this article, is two things. So this is a New York Post article. Again, it's from March 18th, so it's pretty old, but from this analysis, which is a limited analysis of deaths in um, Italy, uh, from the National Institutes of Health released Tuesday, which was March 18th in Italy, they evaluated 355 patients who were fatalities, sadly, in Italy, and found only three patients had no prior medical conditions, suggesting that, as the headline would claim, 99% of coronavirus patients in Italy who died, at least on March 18th, had no other health problems. Again, this is an old article, but it is quite an interesting finding. We can also look at preliminary estimates of the prevalence of selected underlying health conditions, that is comorbidities, among patients with coronavirus disease in the US. This is a CDC report from February the 12th to March the 28th, 2020. So this is in the US, it goes a little further. I just wanna highlight a couple of sentences here. The percentage of COVID-19 patients with at least one underlying health condition or risk factor was higher among those requiring intensive care unit admissions, and it was 78% and those requiring hospitalization without ICU admissions was 71%. Um, then among those who were not hospitalized, 21%. So what they're saying here is that 27% of people who were not hospitalized did not have a chronic condition, or I'm actually misquoting that, I'm sorry. They're saying that among those who were not hospitalized, a smaller percentage had one comorbid condition. And of those who were hospitalized, 71% had one pre-existing condition. Of those who went to the ICU, 78% had one underlying health condition. So those are pretty striking numbers. It's a really sad story being painted here. Now, this is in no way, shape, or form to diminish the fact that this virus is virulent and is harming many people. But as I talked about in the podcast today with Stephen Hussey, I think that the definition of what is healthy as a human needs to be reconsidered very carefully because I fear that many of those that are being described as healthy may in fact have sadly had underlying conditions. And perhaps this is a wake up call both to how unhealthy we are as a people and how unhealthy we are um, in general and how we characterize health within our society. So let's just move on to the last thing I want to share with you guys, which is a really pretty cool article that Anthony pointed out to me from, I believe, one of his friends, Jeff Noobs, Nobs. So this is uh, all hat tips to them. So if we are believing these issues, if we are thinking about this and realizing that chronic disease is a major driver of many illnesses, a major susceptibility factor in many illnesses, like COVID, what is driving chronic disease? What is driving these comorbidities? That's a great question. And goodness gracious, Jeff does an awesome job in this article and talking about it. So here's a summary. Rates of chronic conditions like heart disease, asthma, cancer, and diabetes have grown 700% since 1935. Six in 10 Americans today have a chronic disease. Six in 10. 
This harkens back to some of the podcasts I've done with my buddy Tommy Wood when we talked about Parkinson's disease, and uh, those are all in my podcast, Fundamental Health, and I talk about this in my book, The Carnivore Code, as well. The idea that if your entire population is sick, it's very hard to understand what is different between people, and it's very hard to make judgments about why a virus is harming certain people other than, rather than others, and you're swimming in dirty water. So again, I've mentioned this before in my previous posts on Instagram and otherwise, we want to be a part of what is probably 10 to 15% of the American population that is insulin sensitive, that does not have chronic conditions. I suspect that the numbers of people with chronic conditions are even higher than six in 10. So again, sad statistics, but let's think about what's causing this. As Jeff points out here, we are smoking less, drinking less, exercising more, and eating quote healthier, we'll talk about that, compared to previous decades. If we're doing everything right, why do rates of chronic disease and obesity still surge? This is a fascinating question, and I think very well addressed by him in this article. The too long didn't read, the take home is vegetable oil, which now accounts for 20% of our daily calories and has largely remained out of the public spotlight, may be the missing link. The podcast for next Tuesday with my friend Kate Shanahan will be all about vegetable oil. And I'll be talking more about this in the very near future. So chronic disease prevalence in America going up 7.5 to 60% from 1935 to 2020. That is a staggering number that 20%, uh, excuse me, 60% of our population in 2020 have chronic disease. My goodness, that is scary, all right? What is chronic disease according to the CDC? Incurable conditions, heart disease, asthma, cancer, diabetes, they're often preventable. I believe this number is even higher if we believe other things that I have spoken about suggesting that insulin resistance, metabolic dysfunction are present in 88% of the population. This number could be off the graph up here, even higher. So clearly we're doing something wrong. The CDC says chronic disease is driven by tobacco use, lack of physical activity, excess alcohol, and poor nutrition, which they define as diets low in fruit and vegetables, high in sodium and saturated fats. I would disagree with this. In fact, both Jeff and I would disagree with this on all accounts. He does a great job here showing us that, in fact, Americans are smoking less. Now, okay, so this up here, the CDC is saying tobacco use, lack of physical activity, excess alcohol, poor nutrition are driving this, but tobacco use, well, that's going down. Cancer prevalence, about the same, 1990 to 2015. Tobacco use has plummeted. Fewer and fewer people smoke. There are still some cancers continuing to grow, despite the fact that less people are smoking. And this is a significantly, this is a pretty significant decline in smoking. So clearly smoking isn't causing chronic disease. Lack of physical activity, says the CDC. But in fact, more people are now exercising in 2020 than were exercising in the year 1995, right here. So 20 years later, 54.2% of adults were meeting the guidelines. In 1998, 40% of Americans were meeting the minimum physical activity guidelines. So we're actually exercising more right now. Hmm. All right, CDC. CDC cites excess alcohol, poor nutrition as two final contributors to chronic disease. Alcohol consumption over the last 56 years, well, it's gone up a little bit, but mm, it peaked in 1980, and since then it's been flat or going down. And yet if we remember, rates of chronic disease have continued to go way up, at least with these three data points. We don't have a data point in the middle there. So is it alcohol? Perhaps a little bit. They've been mostly flat over the past seven decades, however. <clears throat> poor nutrition. Let's talk about poor nutrition. Let's talk about how we define health as a population. Remember, the CDC said that a healthy diet was, or a lack of a healthy diet, was some people who were eating less fruits and vegetables and more saturated fat. Well, <clears throat> that's strange. As many of you will know, if you've read my book, The Carnivore Code, I would not agree with either of those things necessarily, but think that they are proxies for healthy behaviors in our lives, which are why so many epidemiology studies are confounded. If you look at Americans adhering to what the CDC considers to be healthier eating, 
that number has in fact gone up since 1998 or 95 as depicted in this graphic right here. So the CDC is saying less people are eating healthy, but in fact, according to their guidelines, more people are eating less saturated fat and more fruits and vegetables, and yet chronic disease continue to rise. With healthier diets, we should see decreasing rates of chronic disease and obesity, but instead we see the opposite. This is the rate of rise of obesity in America. Look at this. What? <laughs> That's not going in the right direction. And yet, more people are eating healthier, more people are exercising. What is going on here? Let's look at what I think is one of the most interesting graphs in this excellent article from Jeff. The trend in daily calories from major food groups. What do you think this red line is? Vegetable oils. What do you think this red, this green line is? That's grains. So grains have gone up and then kind of gone down. What is the main line that's going up in a way that parallels obesity, in a way that parallels chronic disease? It is vegetable oils. What about meat? Mm, going up a little bit, not a whole lot. Meat is pretty darn flat compared to vegetable oils. This is the consumption of sugars in the orange line. Again, it kind of parallels grains, imagine that. It peaks and then it goes down, but sugars and grains are not nearly as associated with the rise in chronic disease as vegetable oils. Isn't that interesting? You can see there are many other lines on this graph that I won't go into. So what do we know about this? Diabetes is also rising. Which line? Well, let's get more into meat. Total consumption by type. Ah, if we look at that meat line, which is going up very slightly, the slope of this line is pretty low. What if we break that down into types of meat? It's mostly poultry. <laughs> and no one would suggest that poultry is a bad thing because poultry is supposed to be good for us, right? You guys know this is kind of tongue in cheek in my mind because I wrote all about how red meat ruminants are fantastic. Poultry is great for humans too, but I think red meat is some of the best meat we can eat. Let's look at the consumption of beef. That went down. Well, that's interesting. Pork went down. Lamb and goat has been small forever, and that went down further. I'm not sure what other type of meat is in the other here, but poultry is the main type of meat that's gone up, and yet the CDC is claiming that saturated fat is the cause of our ills, when in fact most people eat poultry and it's pretty darn lean. So isn't that strange? That's very interesting, and I think that this really paints a different picture here. So Americans are in fact eating less saturated fat, cholesterol, and sodium. Well, why is the CDC claiming otherwise? I have no idea. Grams of saturated fat per person per day is in blue. It's pretty much a flat line. Cholesterol going down, sodium essentially going down or flat since before the 1980s. So what is going on here? Trend in plant versus animal food consumption. Animal foods have stayed the same. Chronic disease has gone up. Plant foods have gone up. Whether or not we can break this down into types of plant foods is questionable, but it certainly does not... in suggests an indictment for animal foods. What do we know? Here it is, you guys. American consumption of vegetable oil. Boom. This is a pretty compelling case that this is all vegetable oils in the dark red. Soybean, canola, sunflower, cotton seed, peanut, and others. This is super important to know about which oils are going up like this. Look at this. They're all going up with soybean being the most. Super bad news but all the oils going up, vegetable oil is looking pretty darn guilty to me. So I will leave you with this graphic here, vegetable oil consumption, all of them going up, when in fact, animal foods are not increasing, saturated fat, cholesterol, and sodium are not increasing, beef consumption is decreasing, poultry is increasing, but poultry has not been associated epidemiologically with the increase in problems, chronic disease, or other negative outcomes like red meat has. But again, that's related to epidemiology, which we know is highly confounded. Diabetes is rising. Vegetable oil is looking pretty darn culprit-like to me. And I will go up to the original graph, which shows these things in detail. What is driving chronic disease? You decide that is chronic disease. And those are the majority of my thoughts on all of this. So in the midst of coronavirus, we need to consider the importance of 
comorbidities, which seem to have a huge impact on all of this, and what is driving these comorbidities, what is driving chronic disease. That is the question I'm asking in my book, The Carnivore Code. That is the question I'm asking in general, and I think we have a pretty good answer here, and it is not red meat. It is vegetable oil primarily. Next week's podcast with Kate Shanahan is going to talk all about that. Love you guys. Hope you're doing good. Sorry, it's getting dark here, but stay radical and stay safe and stay healthy. However you believe the best way to do that is, but you know what I think.